Happy Monday. Morning, Anna. How are you guys? Good, how are you? Good, thanks for joining me this morning. Good morning. Good morning, good to see everybody. Hi everybody on Facebook, thanks for joining me there too. I love starting my week with all of you guys. So listen, we're gonna jump right in because I think I have a lot to say. Um, <laughs> hi. Um, and I'm excited to really dig into this with you guys. So if you are joining us, uh, you might want to grab paper and pen. I'm hoping there'll be some writer downers for you. And uh, again, this is an opportunity for us to, you know, just take a look in. And my, my goal for this Monday Morning Mojo session is to not just inspire you or motivate you, but to get you thinking. Uh, and as a coach, I ask questions to open up those thoughts. So uh, welcome to your coaching session this week. And I'm really uh, honored to be one of those people who could support you in your growth. So let's just get into it. And um, this topic came up for me over the weekend and uh, I was having a conversation with my business partner and we were kind of laughing about a few things. And I said, listen, here's the reality. We're all a hot mess. And that was when I had the light bulb go off. So today's topic is I'm a hot mess and so are you. So what does that really mean? It means that we're not perfect. And it means that all of us um, at times are struggling with something. And so I think that, you know, this is a really big, um, I think this is a big issue for a lot of people. And, and, and it's all wrapped up in not wanting to admit that we might need help or support. And certainly we don't want to admit that we're a hot mess. Um, but I think that we have to unpack this and really like talk about um, how valuable it can be to just be honest with ourselves and other people. And I want to say this is not about um, getting a pass or taking a back seat to striving to, to do excellent work or striving to grow. It's just that I think when we are pursuing perfectionism, uh, not only will we struggle, but we are going to really probably put undue stress on our lives. And so I think the truth is that we don't always have it all together and maybe we don't have to. And I'm going to give you some things to consider about that this morning too. Um, and I think that at the end of the day, we all struggle at times. And um, I think that one of the biggest struggles is to be brave enough to admit when we might need help. Uh, or be brave enough to admit when we don't know something. And certainly I think some of us have more challenge with this than others. Uh, and I'm gonna say too, I think that this is something that affects men as much as it affects women. I think it shows up differently for men and women, but it affects us all the same way. And so I think that when we admit, so instead of just struggling with it, but when we admit that we might need some support or some help, or we don't have all the answers, uh, when we admit that um, we have fear, that we have uh, insecurity or doubt about our own performance or uh, impact that we can have in the world, uh, that we not only open up possibility for ourselves, but we give other people permission to show up vulnerable too. And that's really important. So I just want to say, you know, every Monday morning, I've been doing this now since May 24th, I think. Um, and every Monday morning, I start out before you guys get on. Uh, and I stand here and I say, Lord, thank you for this opportunity to impact other people. Let me, let me, let me be, you know, a, a conduit for information and for growth. And please, Lord, do not let me look like an idiot. <laughs> because I worry too every time I get on this like am I going to look okay am I going to sound okay I'm trying out these new backgrounds so I'm going to think this looks silly is my hair all right is what I say make sense does anyone care what I have to say does it help anyone it's all that chatter is going through my head too then I start thinking about you know how Oprah looks on her calls you know how does uh, another podcaster sound and I realize what I'm doing is is trying to compare myself to other people and I get worked up about trying to be perfect. And in that, in that act of trying to be perfect, we miss the opportunities to grow and show up. And, and if, if we just let it go and connect with whatever it is that we're doing, we're gonna give 100% and we're gonna give you know, an amazing um, experience and we're going to you know, give ourselves the space to really you know, come forward in a powerful way. 
So I think that at the end of the day, most people want to achieve great things, right? I think we all, most people are striving to do a good job. I think we're striving to, uh, you know, show up in, in big ways. We want to come from contribution. I mean, how many of you can say that's important to you, right? To, to help people, to be a leader. Uh, and, and then, you know, we want to be recognized, I think, too, for our efforts, right? It's okay to say that. Uh, it feels good, right? We want to be appreciated for uh, what, we're, what we're doing. And I think that, you know, that desire to be good can sometimes become a runaway train, right? And so when life doesn't go our way, or when we think that we've been given a big challenge, or if we doubt our abilities, it can start to really unnerve us. And so when things, you know, perhaps we, we experience an outcome that's not desirable, that only adds to it, right? Because we know that our beliefs and our thoughts are shaping what we do and say, and then that's what brings our results. So if we think that the result was less than perfect, that's gonna add more programming until it really can make us a little crazy. And so I think that when we look at trying to be perfect, we miss the opportunity to show up and just be excellent. And I think that it's an opportunity for us to just show up and do better than we did yesterday, right? Because, you know, what is perfection or per what is being perfect with perfection? I mean, what's the definition? Is it different for me than it is for you? Probably. So what is it that we're really looking at? I think for a lot of us, we're looking for some sort of validation. Uh, and, and a lot of times it's inward, right? It's not even outward. And I think that, you know, when we strive for excellence over perfection, and, and look to just show up and be better than we were the day before, then there is no need to be perfect, right? Because then we're just continuing to grow and strive for better. And so if you're writing notes, I would say, it's not about being perfect, it's about being better. So perfectionism actually is defined, I have it written down here, it's defined as an absence of flaws and defects. Really, is that the way we should describe ourselves as human beings? That we are absent of flaws and defects? Surely no. So why are we striving for this kind of false sense of reality? So that would be something I'd write in my notes too, false sense of reality. Um, and why are we so afraid to let other people see us not being perfect? Right, so we're gonna talk about that too. I think we all have our days when we feel overwhelmed and anxious um, and not put together, right? Uh, maybe not even confident about what we're doing um, and we're afraid someone's gonna figure it out. And then we're afraid people are gonna think we're being an imposter. So the imposter syndrome is real and a part of this conversation too, right? And I've, and I've dealt with that too. I have put in over a decade of time uh, studying and getting several certifications as a coach. And I still struggle with do people really think I know what I'm talking about? And then I say to myself, well, what does it matter? What is it really about people believing that I have the credibility and the credentials? Or is it if I say something and ask a powerful question that it gets you thinking and it's something that is gonna impact your life? Because I believe that's really what I'm here to do as a coach, right? Yet we all struggle with how do other people perceive us? So I think that when we're afraid to let other people see our um, insecurities or we're afraid that if we come out less than polished and perfect, that we're not gonna get the respect. Um, I think that again, we're cutting ourselves off from the human experience. So I think when we spend all of our energy pretending and hiding, the fact that we're human instead of admitting we don't have all the answers, we also miss all the learning experiences too. So we'll unpack that in a second. I mean, really, like, why should we all have all the answers? If you're the smartest person in the room all the time, that is a disadvantage. If you are too afraid to raise your hand in a meeting and say, I'm sorry, could we just take a second? I'm not really sure I understand what was just said. Or I've never heard that term before. Could you explain that to me? If you were in that situation and someone stopped the meeting and said, I'm sorry, could you just take a second and explain that to me? Because I want to make sure that I can be a part of this conversation in a meaningful way. I don't think you would judge that person. 
I think that we should have respect for people who are courageous enough to say, stop, I'm not sure I know what that is. Can you, can you teach me? So if we are afraid to do that, if we're afraid to show up in that vulnerable way, we miss out on all the growth opportunities, all the learning opportunities. If you were the expert, if you could, if you were, if you knew everything there was to know about a certain subject, then how do you grow, right? So I think that it's important for us to know that if we're gonna be learning based, which is certainly a key to success, then we have to be willing to show up and say, I don't know, can you teach me, right? So I think that, you know, when we think we have to have all the answers, we're cutting ourselves off from the learning opportunities. So when we struggle to admit that we don't know, um, I think that we're also creating a false sense of reality. And we do that to ourselves every day, right? We have all these false senses of reality. Uh, and forget about when this happens, if you're in a leadership position, OMG, right? Like if you're, if you're the leader of a group, um, you know, if the leader of your home, right? A mom, a dad, uh, you're, you're in a community group or some type of, you know, maybe you sit on a board and uh, you're sitting there and you're, you're on the board and they're talking about financials and it's not something you're really familiar with and you're just going along for the ride and voting and doing all kinds of stuff. You know why? Because you think leaders have to be perfect. And you're saying to yourself, leaders have all the answers and leaders are polished and oh my gosh, I couldn't possibly ask a question right now, right? So I'm gonna tell you something, leaders are not perfect. And what makes a good leader is that they know where to find the answers. It's not that they have all the answers. Leaders just know where to find all the answers and they're not afraid to ask. So I think that we have to take a step back, right? And we have to say, you know what, leaders, uh, I can't have this dialogue with myself that say, oh my gosh, leaders couldn't, couldn't possibly be a little messy inside. Of course they are, that's why they're leaders. We're messy people because we're willing to say, I'll, I'll, I'll get in there and work with you, I'll get in there and try it, okay? So I think that we have to be real with ourselves and I think we have to understand that reality is truth. So if you can't be honest with yourself or other people, then are you being really truthful? Are you in integrity? So I think, you know, we have to cut out that dialogue and say, you know, nobody wants to follow or listen to someone who's really a hot mess inside. And I'm here to tell you people that yes, they do. Because what this world is craving for are authentic leaders. Authentic leaders who are not afraid to show up and be who they are. And I got to tell you, this is another newsflash for some of you, maybe. Uh, your, all this work and effort that you're putting into trying to be perfect, you know it's exhausting. And I'm going to tell you the newsflash. We already know you're not perfect. The harder you try, the more unraveled you become. And it's not because of the stuff you think that's causing that. It's because of all this energy that you're putting out to keep it all together. And so not only do we know it, but we're not perfect either. So if we could all just kind of band together and support each other and say, listen, again, this is not a free pass. This is not about saying, well, <laughs> Anna says I don't have to be perfect. That means I don't have to try so hard today. Um, no, it means that we have to put our energy into figuring things out. And like I said, showing up and being better than we were before the day before. So not to mention, I want to say again, uh, and I know I've mentioned a few times about the way that you will cut yourself off from growth opportunities. See, it's really, write this down, it's about failing forward, failing forward. If we're striving to be perfect, we're missing the opportunities to really have those learning experiences that give us pause, where we can implement strategic options, where we can learn from our mistakes, see why it didn't work out, and look at how to do it differently now going forward. So I think again, you know, we miss the opportunity to grow our leadership, we miss the opportunity to grow our strategic and logical thinking. We miss the opportunities to learn from other people because we're too afraid to ask them for help, right? And I think that some people somehow, 
let me just slow it down because my brain's going really fast now. I think somewhere in all this too, what's wrapped up is the need to please as well. Not for everybody, but for some people, there's a need to please, right? So I, I just have to keep saying yes, 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 yes. And uh, you know, I want you to think that I'm capable and I want you to think that I have it all together. And I want you to think that I'm smart. And I want you to think that I'm the best person on the team and on and on and on and on. And then we are trying to hide all of our imperfections or our insecurities or our doubts or whatever we need help with. And again, all of that is taking so much energy that we're diminishing our own effectiveness. We are actually diminishing the very things that we could be bringing forward in our strengths because we're putting all of our time and energy and some talent into, you know, I, I don't know how many of you know, like Rachel from Friends, right? She was that perfect person. And then they opened her closet and it was a hot mess in the closet because no one can be perfect in all things. There is going to be overflow somewhere. So in your life, you're going to have a messy closet somewhere where you're going to shove all that stuff that you're not able to deal with and balance because you're so busy over here making the world think that you look good and you sound right all the time. Are you with me? Am I preaching to the choir? Or am I the only hot mess on this call? I don't know. I, I have a feeling you guys know what it is that I'm saying. So again, people want real. They want you to show up and be authentic. They want to see that you are just as messy as they are. Okay, especially leaders. No one wants to, you know, again, reality is honesty, right? So I think when you think about it, don't we all crave leaders who are transparent? Yes. Don't crave, yeah, don't we crave leaders who are honest? Do you really trust a leader who says, I know it all, even if they don't say it quite that way, but they act like, I know it all. I don't need advisors. Then we can smile back and say, yes, uh-huh, that's perfect. Thank you. <laughs> yes. So I think that we have to be honest about that and think about what is it that you admire and expect in a leader? Are you showing up that way? Are you truly showing up that way? Are you someone who's not afraid to say, <clears throat> excuse me, I need some advisement. I need some support information. I mean, wouldn't you rather follow a, a leader who is real than a leader who thinks they're always right? Yeah. So, you know, again, why do we struggle with admitting our own challenges? Why do we struggle with admitting that we might need more information? Is it pride? Is it, is it fear? I mean, the fact that we're a little bit of a hot mess can show up in a lot of ways, right? Maybe we run late to everything a few minutes, right? Maybe uh, you procrastinate. Maybe your, your thoughts are really messy. Maybe your office is super messy. Maybe your house is a little messy. Uh, maybe you forget things. You get nervous before a presentation. Um, you yell at your kids sometimes. You know, you get stumped by questions often. Whatever it is, you know, you're afraid to raise your hand and say, I need help or I, I don't have all the answers. I think that, you know, when we fear judgment of other people, when we fear failing, right? Which I've already told you being um, in leadership and success, it is all about failing forward. Um, and I think when we set that, this is a writer downer. When we set the bar too high for ourselves, a bar that we can't possibly reach when we have goals that are really unrealistic and we think that it's in the name of being a big thinker, we are setting ourselves up for failure, which is only gonna continue programming the thoughts that I can't let anyone see this, I can't let anyone know this because I fear their, their judgment, I fear the failure, I have to be perfect, I've created this, you know, um, maybe some of you are thinking, you know, I've created this experience that people expect me to be, maybe they don't say perfect, but I, you know, people expect me to know everything. They come to me for all the answers. I don't know all the answers. I don't. And I'm glad because it gives me an opportunity to learn something new. And, you know, setting the bar so high is so much pressure. And again, all that energy is wasted now, you know, for sure, I am someone who's gonna encourage you to set goals and dream big and stretch without a doubt.
But I'm talking about those crazy goals that we set that somewhere we already know we're not going to hit. And maybe that's why we set them so that we can create that cert, that cycle, that self-perpetuating cycle of saying, see, I can't do it. And we become our own inner critic. So my, my message to you today is let go of all of this. And, and maybe you didn't know it was a pursuit of, of, of being perfect, but it is. It's this, this crazy not, uh, notion that we have this you know, sense of perfectionism in the world, right? And I mean, I could go on for another hour about the effects of social media and you know, what, what we see, you know, that filtered version of someone's life. And don't get me wrong, I am grateful for social media. As you can see, I use it as a vehicle uh, all the time. It's a communication vehicle. And um, I do believe we can have some authentic uh, connections through social media, but it's all about the intention we start out with, right? So it's, it's we know that many people are putting up, you know, the smoke and mirrors. They're editing and filtering out the moments they want you to see. And, um, you know, we have to make sure that we're not going after something that is just not, not really a, a, gonna support us or, or the reality either. So I, if you're writing notes, I think setting impossible standards and comparing ourselves to others is, is also part of this conversation. So I think when we fail, it's not because we can't do it. It's not because we're not capable. And it's not because, um, you know, it's not because we don't have what it takes. I think when we fail at something, it's because we fail to plan. 99% of the time, that's really what it is. And so it's really about getting into strategic thinking. And I think there's a lot of power in masterminding with someone else, whether it's your coach, whether it's peers, you know, someone who can really get into the conversation with you. And that conversation can keep you from allowing your emotions to get a little bit out of control, where we start thinking about all these things, you know, that we've mentioned this morning that lead to this sense of wanting to be perfect. When we can get into strategic thinking and really kind of pull it apart and then look at, okay, so what do I need to learn in order to accomplish this? I, that's one of the questions I ask myself all the time. Any goal I set, I never assume I have every tool in my toolbox. And maybe I do, but I at least ask the question. So who do I have to become in order to hit this goal? What do I have to learn in order to, be, to meet this goal? And that automatically puts me into a space where I'm looking for support. I'm looking to say to someone, I might need to know more than, uh, than I do now, and maybe you can help me. I don't have all the answers. So. I think when we fail to plan, that leads us to failure. And when we put undue pressure on ourselves for how to get there, we put a lot of pressure and that can cause failure as well. So I think that perfectionism is a dangerous state of mind. And, uh, and I would write that down. Perfectionism is a dangerous state of mind and it often leads to self-criticism. See, what we fear in our pursuit of perfectionism, whether we label it that or not, is we fear other people's judgment. But honestly, the most dangerous part of this is what we do to ourselves. The inner dialogue and the criticism we put on ourselves. So what's the antidote for this? I'm gonna give it to you, it's a little recipe. It's one part self-love, it's one part self-compassion for, compassion for ourselves, and it's another part of vulnerability. That's your cocktail. Renee Brown is probably one of the leading experts on uh, vulnerability. And I love this quote. Those who have a strong sense of love and belonging have the courage to be imperfect. So Brene Brown said, those who have a strong sense of love and belonging have the courage to be imperfect. Another antidote to perfectionism is to take time to understand your strengths and weaknesses. So whether it's working with a coach to do that, I help my clients with that, some assessments that I give, um, or you know, finding an assessment on your own. I think that we have to get super clear about those two things. And, and I would encourage you to master your strengths and accept your weaknesses and find the leverage for the weaknesses. When you work in your strength zone, you are going to uh, always perform at a higher level. And you're, when you adopt a growth mindset, 
you know, you know that asking questions and admitting for, you know, admitting that you need some help is, is part of the journey. Um, so I also believe that that is a big part of kind of undoing that perfectionism or that quest for perfectionism. Um, so I just wanna say that when we stand up and say, hi, my name is Anna and I'm a hot mess, that we will find other people in the room will go, oh my gosh, me too. And they're not gonna judge you, they're going to support you. And I think that when we show up, uh, we give other people permission to show up as, as their authentic self. And so I'm grateful to have this platform with all of you. I know there's a bunch of questions. I've seen the chat light up. Um, so let me, let me open that up. But I, I really love you guys on Zoom because it does give us an opportunity for dialogue. Um, so Sarah, I know you had a hand raised. What do you want to say? Oh, I needed to hear this this morning. Oh, good. I, well, listen, I'm not kidding. I mean, what I pray every day before Mojo, I'm like, Lord, just make sure it's what they need. So what did you get out of this morning? Well, sister, um, you hooked me up. Um, so I'm taking this class, uh, this digital history class, which is terrifying because I haven't taken a class for decades. <laughs> I've yeah. taught classes, but I haven't taken a class, but I know that I need better digital skills. And, um, and yesterday I spent, well, last night I um, was beating my head against the wall trying to build this web page that is our assignment and I and there's some kind of disconnect I'm just not getting it um, so anyway I need to go back today and say to go on our slack channel and say okay I need the remedial version because there I'm not getting this like that I've I've downloaded these the, you know these apps but I don't know how to put them together and make this work um, and I think it's fear. I think fear just shuts us down. And that's what you have to be really vigilant about. Well said, Sarah, and good for you. I love that you're taking this class and it's about identifying people who can help you, right? And like I said, you know, leaders, we're all leaders um, and the most successful people, they do not have all the answers. They just know where to find them. So I want you to figure out who can help you today uh, and not be afraid to say, this is out of my wheelhouse. I mean, why should we assume we have to know everything? You know, I don't, you know, especially when we're looking to start a business or grow our career, you know, a lot of things come into that, but that doesn't mean that, you know, for what you're doing, that you're a webmaster, right? So you just have to find someone who can help you. Um, anyone else have some comments or ahas from this morning? Anyone else get what they needed or didn't know they needed? <laughs> I keep I keep hearing the serenity prayer in my head when, when it comes to all the things that well, I cannot change. So that seems to be sort of a reminder. Yeah, well. for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I you know, this is something that I witnessed in corporate America for a long time. And and to me, the pursuit of perfection can be paralyzing. I actually, you know, you'd see people who consistently like people who really smart intelligent people that you look up to miss deadlines constantly because in their mind, they could never get their work to that final perfect stage. Yeah. And it's unfortunate because their, their excellent work product is probably better than most other people's, but in their head. And yeah, it's- And I know um, that this is a problem because I've heard this before. Um, people have said it to me many times. I've just heard it said in conversations. Um, you reveal something uh, authentic about yourself and the person looking at you says, oh my gosh, I'm so glad to know that you don't have all the answers all the time, or I'm so glad to know that you struggle too, or I'm so glad to know you're just as real, or I'm so glad to know you're not Wonder Woman. And yeah. I, 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 I hear those things and I say, wow, I have to show up and be more vulnerable. I have yeah. to show up and be more authentic. You know, I mean, I appreciate someone who can recognize my talent for sure. Yep. But at the same time, you know, we're human. And again, this is not about not striving to be the best version of yourself every day. Yep. This is just about being kind to yourself and, and stop trying, you know, stop scurrying around trying to hide all the flaws and all the frayed edges. You know, the frayed edges are what make you dynamic and interesting and make you really, if you think about it, the frayed edges are all the learning opportunities you can share with other people, yeah. right? 
So I just, you know, I, really to crack this conversation open could probably take hours, you know, but again, reality is truth. Reality is truth. So, yeah. and stop inserting that substitute reality. Anybody else before we go? I, I, I just want to say Mr. Rogers was spot on when he says, we love you just the way you are. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. Well, listen, if this message has resonated with you, I'm going to uh, encourage you and challenge you to take five more minutes right now before um, you go on to the next thing, because that's another thing, right? We're constantly on to the next thing and we don't have time to process. Two weeks ago, I talked about the power of reflection and asking yourself uh, important questions. So I just want you to take uh, five minutes and pull something out of your notes from this morning that you need to work on. And if there's anything I can do to help you, if you'd like to talk about it more, uh, you know, you can always reach out to me. Um, if you, um, Jill put something in the chat about, I should have this conversation or, or teach this to another group of people. Honestly, you know, that's always uh, something I love to do is to teach and to speak. So if, if anyone's looking for a speaker, certainly you can let me know about that. But I think that this message is important for everyone, myself included. So I'm glad I was able to share it with you. So you have a great rest of your day and a powerful week. And I'll see you back here next Monday. Bye, Anna. Thank, thank you. And listen, if this is helping you, if you're finding value in being a part of this Monday Morning Mojo, pay it forward. And please invite people to like the Facebook group and invite them to the Zoom so that they can you know, plug in and get some, some good stuff too. All right, everyone, have a great day. All right. Take care. Bye. Enjoy Bye. the week. Bye-bye.